It's a chilly day in the fall of 2000. I'm in an emergency room. My face is swollen and bruised. The doctor asks, who did this to you? I tell him I fell down the stairs. <sighs> I'm ashamed and frankly afraid to tell the truth. After being discharged, I quickly cover up the bruises with the handy makeup that I keep with me. I'm living a double life. Who would believe that this successful Wall Street banker has a secret at home? But like a good Indian girl, I decide to keep it that way because leaving him is not an option where I come from. On my way back home, I find a quiet park bench and sit down. My skin feels warm. I have a fever once again this week. But somehow, I've taken this detour today, and I take a deep breath. The stress dissolves. I know exactly what I need to do. I go home, pack my bags with him, chasing behind. I make my escape. I did escape the relationship, but the stress from it still lived inside my body. And what did I do to deal with it? I dove straight into my job, piling on even more stress. Soon, I got promoted to become the youngest managing director of the firm, and even earned a new nickname, Pitbull. <laughs> but the truth is, when I wasn't going full speed at work, I was curling up in bed, recovering from some form of illness. Then, one day, my very calm friend Vic took me to a meditation center, and I was relieved to get out of that place. How is anyone supposed to sit still, let alone focus on their breath each and every time their mind wanders? This meditation business is tough. But I decided to continue my practice anyway. They didn't call me Pitbull for nothing. <laughs> Before I even knew it, I got hooked onto meditation. What was once a month became once a week, which quickly turned into a daily practice. I also had this strange realization that I'm not getting sick that often anymore. Could this have something to do with my meditation practice? I wasn't sure, but I sure wanted to find out. So I did what any practical person would do in my place. I quit my perfectly stable, high-paying job to go back to school to study neuropsychology, social work, to work as a researcher at a brain lab, and to teach meditation. You should have seen the reaction on my traditional Indian father's face. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> but the pull was so strong that I couldn't resist. Today, I know I made the right choice because I get to share with you my research findings about the mind-blowing changes that take place inside your body each and every time you put a break on stress. Each and every time you put a break on stress. I know you already know this. Stress is not that great for you. But let me explain how much stress actually physically affects your health. Let's say you're way behind on a paper that's due tonight. You're obviously totally stressing out, but this is what's really happening inside your body. Your brain thinks that you're under a threat, so it triggers your fight or flight response, a response that's so severe that it's meant to be reserved for predator attacks. But if a predator really attacked you, you will be left with open wounds, with germs seeping in getting you sick. So in the stress response, your body fills up with adrenaline, your stress commander, which then sends troops of germ-killing cells that biologists call cytokines. 
these cytokine cells in stress go ahead and attack your healthy tissues. Your body is in a full-blown war, which is also known in biology as inflammation. So one of your organs that's most affected by stress and its inflammation is your gut or your gastrointestinal tract. Your gut is the tube that digests your food. Your gut has a protective wall around it, protecting its insides from the harmful germs that might be on the outside. In stress, your cytokine cells attack your gut wall, making literal holes on it, letting the outside germs in, getting you sick. So that explains how I was getting sick so often during my days of stress. What made things worse for me was the fact that I was constantly stressed. So my body was at a constant state of war. Eventually, my immune system got too exhausted to fight away the germs effectively. A low-grade inflammation became my body's new normal. Even my genes started changing to keep this inflammation going. Yes, you did hear me right. Your genes actually change during your lifetime to help you adapt to new circumstances, which in this case, unfortunately, is of chronic stress. So let's get this straight, right? It, stress creates inflammation, and that inflammation could get imprinted into your genes. Wow, how could you possibly reverse such a permanent state of inflammation? There has to be a way, right? I could tell you of at least one way, by becoming mindful. Mindfulness is a trait that helps you stop stress. Mindfulness is a trait that you develop by practicing meditation every day. Think of it as a workout for your mind. So when you meditate and your mind wanders, you train your mind to come back to a present moment anchor, such as the physical sensation of a full breath. So if you have this practice and do face a stressful situation, your mind is already trained to bring you back. So how does this work in real life, right? Let's say you're still way behind on that paper and negative thoughts are piling up. Oh no, I'm gonna miss the deadline. If I miss the deadline, I'll fail the test. If I fail the test, I won't find a job. If I can't find a job, my life would be doomed. But if you're mindful, another version of you emerges the mindful you. It looks over your thoughts and says, I see you're stressed, but let's take a pause. Tune into your breath. You just put a break on stress. Now you have one of two options. You could either continue to worry about the future while you work on the paper, or you could work on the paper, being present with each word, each sentence. And you choose to work mindfully. Each time you become mindful, each and every time you become mindful, you avert the war that stress wages on your body. Your body returns to its natural state of balance, a state that's designed to keep you healthy. So let's say you do pick up a cold virus, but if you have this practice of mindfulness, your body has developed this sense of knowing as to exactly when to switch on its peacekeeping modes, which then precisely targets at the cold germ, getting rid of it, leaving very little collateral damage. Well, that explains how I've been so lucky ever since I started mindfulness to bounce back quickly from cold. Isn't that amazing? Pretty amazing. But there is something else that I found during my research, even more intriguing. There is a chemical called HDAC inhibitor. HDAC inhibitor is becoming a popular ingredient for drugs to treat cancer and in immunotherapy. You could think of HDAC inhibitor as a genetic elixir that works by literally remodeling your genes to switch on an anti-inflammatory, anti-tumor effect. It turns out that a group of scientists at the University of Wisconsin-Madison found higher levels of this exact same elixir chemical 
circulating naturally inside the bodies of mindfulness meditators as opposed to their non-meditating counterparts. Wow, huge discovery, which also left me with one huge question. Where did all these mindful people get so much of this very potent chemical? So I did my research to find an answer. And here's what I found. When you're mindful, you stop stress. So your body stops attacking itself. Your healthy tissues stay healthy, including the tissues on your gut. Here is something fascinating about your gut. When your gut comes in contact with germs, it decides to keep some of them inside. Not the harmful ones, but the ones that are really good for you. Let's call them your gut microbes. There are 100 trillion of these foreign gut microbe cells inside your body, which is three times more than native human cells in you. Living like aliens, these vast colonies of teeny tiny little microbes just hanging out on your gut wall. <laughs> when you're mindful, I've found in my research, your gut wall stays unharmed. When your gut wall is protected, it protects its microbes. When the vast colonies of your gut microbes are safe and thriving, they produce a huge amount of a very potent chemical. I want you to, for a moment, take a wild guess which chemical I'm talking about. Exactly, HDAC inhibitor, the exact same elixir that was found naturally circulating inside the bodies of mindfulness meditators, the exact same elixir that's used to treat cancer and in immunotherapy. So mystery solved. It's your gut microbes that produce this large amount of elixir naturally when you're mindful, potentially giving you protection from big diseases like cancer, autoimmune condition, so you can think of mindfulness as a natural immunotherapy. Wow, amazing. It's just amazing. But there is something else that I've found. When you're mindful, you attract more mindful people into your life. And that might explain how nine years after I started my meditation practice, I met a very kind, compassionate person from Norway my loving, most wonderful husband. Together, we have two beautiful little twin boys. <laughs> my tiny gurus, who teach me how to be present every moment of my life. <sighs> you see, I believe that mindfulness is contagious. When you become mindful, those around you become mindful. And maybe with research like this, the world would come to realize that mindfulness is so much more than an abstract buzzword. And maybe, just maybe, it would inspire even more people to become mindful, propagating mindfulness until the whole planet becomes mindful. With that, I'd like to invite you to unlock the healing power of becoming mindful. So next time you're faced with a stressful situation, take a pause, ask yourself, should I get stressed out and turn my body into a war zone? Or should I become mindful and turn my body into a sanctuary of peace? Well, remember, when you choose to be mindful, your healing microbes are gonna thank you. Thanks.